Hi students, today we have to talk about the nervous system in rabbit. In all vertebrates, we have the same fundamental basic pattern of nervous system. Only there is increase in complexity as in the case of human beings or in the case of lower vertebrates, the complexity is somewhat decreased. Now, as a general rule, the nervous system is being formed of three divisions. What are the divisions of the nervous system? One, central nervous system. Central nervous system. Two, peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system. And the third one, autonomic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system. So these are all the three divisions of the nervous system. Now what are the components of the central nervous system? The central nervous system is being formed of two components. Number one, brain. Number two, spinal cord. These are the two components of the central nervous system. They are normally found in the mid central axis of the body. Now, suppose this is the brain and this is the spinal cord. Arising from the brain and spinal cord, we have the nerves. These are all the nerves. Arising from the brain and then spinal cord. This is the brain and this is the spinal cord. Now, the peripheral nervous system includes those nerves arising from the brain as well as from the spinal cord, deviating from the central nervous system to other parts of the body, circling or innervating the branches. So the peripheral nervous system includes in rabbit 37 pairs of spinal nerves. 37 pairs of spinal nerves. And 12 pairs of cranial nerves. 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Unlike the human beings, in human beings we have 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves. But rarely we have 37 pairs of spinal nerves arising from the spinal cord. These are all the spinal nerves. And those nerves arising from the spinal cord are called the spinal nerves. And those arising from the brain are called cranial nerves. So this is the basic fundamental divisions of the nervous system. Now, let's talk about something about the brain structure. As a general rule, in all the vertebrates, the brain is enclosed in the cranial cavity or cranium. It is being protected. The entire central nervous system, not only the brain but also the spinal cord, is being protected by three connective tissue membranes. These membranes are called meninges. There are three membranes, outer, middle and inner. The outer membrane is called dura mat. Outer membrane is called dura mat. The middle membrane is called arachnoid membrane. Arachnoid. Arachnoid membrane. And the innermost one is called pyramid. The innermost one is called pyramid. So these are the three membranes, connective tissue membranes covering the whole central nervous system, that is brain and spinal cord, outer dura matter, medial arachnoid membrane and inner pia matter, not matter, this is matter, only one T, just we see that one, M-A-T-E-R. So that's about the meninges. Now what are the divisions of the brain? So the brain and all vertebrates having a same basic fundamental pattern. It's being divided into three parts, one, forebrain, another one, midbrain, and hindbrain. So what are the divisions of the brain? One, forebrain. Now, the next two, one, midbrain. The third one, hindbrain. So these are the divisions of the brain. 
The foreground is also called Crossing Cephalon. It's also called Crossing Cephalon. The main brain is called Mesencephalon. Mesencephalon. The hind brain is called Rhombencephalon. The main brain is called the Mesencephalon. The hind brain is called, that is, Robencephalon. These are the three divisions, forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain. The forebrain is otherwise called as prosencephalon. The midbrain is otherwise called mesencephalon. The hindbrain is otherwise called as rhombencephalon. Now, what are the components of forebrain? What are the components of the forebrain? Now, the forebrain includes the following components. Number one. A pair of olfactory lobes. A pair of olfactory lobes. Then a pair of cerebral hemispheres. A pair of cerebral hemispheres. The largest part of the brain. A pair of cerebral hemispheres. And also a region. Diencephalon. Diencephalon. So these are the three components of the forebrain. The forebrain includes a pair of olfactory lobes. See that one, a pair of olfactory lobes. This is a pair of olfactory lobes present anteriorly, concerned with the sense of smell. Then a pair of large cerebral hemispheres. A pair of large cerebral hemispheres. And this is the largest part. Now the two cerebral hemispheres are interconnected by means of a transverse band of nervous tissue. The name of the nervous tissue is corpus callosum. So what is corpus callosum or Thomas question? Now the two cerebral hemispheres are connected with one another by a transverse band of nervous tissue and that band of nervous tissue is called corpus callosum. Then we have the last part, the diencephalon in the forebrain region. Now the diencephalon is normally present between the midbrain and the cerebral hemispheres. And in the center of the diencephalon we have what is called a pineal body. A small pineal body is present dorsally in the case of diencephalon. So what I represented is nothing but the dorsal view of the brain, not the ventral view. We can see some other thing. In the ventral view. So, the diencephalon is the la last part of the brain, that is a forebrain, having a pineal body in its center dorsally. Now, we have the last part, sorry, the middle part, the midbrain. The midbrain is formed of what are the components of midbrain? The midbrain is formed of actually four optic loops. Four optic loops. Hence, it's also called corpora quadrigemina. Corpora quadrigemina. Now, two peculiar characters in the case of mammalian brain. One presence of corpus callosum between the two cerebral hemispheres. Another one, the presence of four optic loops, together called corpora quadrigemina. Now this is the optic lobe which constitutes the membrane. Then we have to go for the hindbrain. Now the hindbrain is formed of the following components. One, cerebellum. Two, pons. So one, cerebellum. Two, pons. Also called as pons veroli. Pons or pons veroli. The third one, medulla oblongate. Medulla oblongate. These are all the three components of the higher brain. The cerebellum is actually formed of a middle part, what is called vermis. Now this is the vermis. 
actually is not there in your book and two lateral hemispheres two lateral hemispheres median vernis and two lateral hemispheres controlling the movement of the body so this is a cerebellum the first part and also we have pons which is being hidden it is a nerve bridge connecting the two lobes of the cerebellum the nerve bridge connecting the two lobes of the cerebellum is called a pons now it is followed by the last part of the hind brain the medulla oblongata so it is a controlling center for various reflex activities controlling the heartbeat cardiovascular activities etc and this is the last part of the hind brain medulla oblongata which is continued behind as a spinal cord which is continued behind as a spinal cord so you have actually the basic part you have a more complex brain in the case of human beings you have already studied in physiology and in the nervous system of humans dear students we have to pass on to the next system urinogenital system in the case of vertebrates normally the urinary or excretory system and the reproductive system are combined together and is being represented as one system what is called urinogenital system now the urinogenital system is being formed of two components as mentioned here one is called urinary or excretory system another one genital or reproductive system now let's talk about first the urinary or excretory system now in the case of rabbit as in the case of other vertebrates including man the excretory system consists of a pair of dark red bean shaped kidneys now these are all the kidneys placed in the abdominal cavity so this is the left kidney and this is what we have the right kidney right kidney placed in the abdominal cavity so normally the right kidney is slightly in upper position than the left one and each kidney is formed of several units called the nephrons the unit the structural and functional units of kidney called nephrons the nephrons are responsible for the separation of waste materials from the blood and excrete the waste materials in the form of urea so urea is a waste product of all the mammals including man so urea is eliminated now from each kidney on the concave side arises a tube what is called ureter what is called ureter it is running backward so a pair of ureters one from each kidney they are running backwards and open into the urinary gland now this is the urinary gland urinary gland the urinary gland is passing on the urine through a thick muscular tube what is called urethra So it opens outside. So a simple organization of the kidney. Normally the kidneys are metanephric kidneys, as in the case of human beings. The waste product is urea, having right and left kidneys placed in the abdominal cavity. The tube arises is called as a ureter, which runs backwards, and both the ureters open into the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder opens through the urinary aperture or urinogenital aperture via the muscular tube called urethra students now let us talk about the various components related to the male reproductive system so it is always in association with the urinary system hence called urinogenital system so we have to talk about male urinogenital system now it consists of a pair of testes so normally in the case of rabbits sexual dimorphism is distinct that means male and female animals are separate and also they are morphologically different this is called sexual dimorphism now let us talk about the male reproductive system it consists of a pair of testes the testes are large 
in scrotal sacs in the abdomen. Now, this one testis. The testis is normally ovoid in nature in shape and placed in the scrotal sacs. Now, this is the scrotal sacs. So, normally, this is one of the important characters of all male vertebrates. Presence of scrotal sac, particularly not in all vertebrates, specifically speaking in the case of all mammals. May be absent in some mammals, not in all vertebrates, only in mammals. So, a pair of testes, the testes is over in nature, placed in the scrotal sac or in the abdominal cavity. Now, each testes is made up of fine tubules, numerous fine tubules. The tubules are called seminiferous tubules. The tubules are called seminiferous tubules. This is the unit of testis, seminiferous tubules, and that is the place of formation or production of spermatozoa. And all these seminiferous tubules join together to form a highly coiled tubule. And now this is called epididymis. Epididymis. It is a place of storehouse of sperm. So seminiferous tubules leading to epididymis. Now the epididymis is running backward. It leads into a sperm duct. That is called the vas deferens. That is called the vas deferens. Otherwise causes sperm duct. So it is running backwards and join the urethra just behind the urinary bladder and just below the urinary bladder. We already seen this is a urinary bladder. Now the urinary bladder is proceeding towards outside in the form of the muscular tube called urethra. Now the urethra runs backward and pass into the penis. So there is a male external genital organ and that is called the penis. The complete organ called penis through which only the urethra, the urinary passage passes and urine along with the reproductive materials are eliminated. Now we have some glands are associated with the male reproductive system. There are three glands. One, prostrate gland. Another one, compass gland. The third one, perineal gland. These are all the three glands associated with the male reproductive system. Now this is what we have, just actually the prostrate gland. Prostrate gland. Then we have the corpus gland just below it and also we have another gland that is the perineal gland just below that corpus gland. Now the first one you see that from the prostate gland. This is the prostate gland. The second one the corpus gland. The third one perineal gland. So all these glands are responsible for the secretion of actually a fluid. Secretion of fluid. That fluid is responsible for the transport of sperm, thus helping in reproduction. So prostate gland, corpus gland, perineal gland. These are all the three glands connected to the male reproductive system, secretions of which are responsible for or helping in reproduction. Hi students, now let us talk about the female reproductive system, the last part of the lesson in rabbit. Now it is also associated with the urinary system, hence called urinogenital system. Now it consists of a pair of ovaries, a pair of ovaries, situated in the abdominal cavities, just behind the kidney. And it is followed by a oviduct. The first part of the oviduct is called fallopian tube. Fallopian tube. Fallopian tube. 
It is having a funnel shaped opening just from the side of each ovary. Now this is the funnel shaped opening. This is the fallopian tube, the first part of the ovary. Now this fallopian tube enlarges to form a wider tube. The name of the wider tube is called uterus. This is uterus. This is the uterus. The two uterus of both sides join together to form vagina. Vagina. Now the vagina and the urinary bladder join together to form a common tube. The name of the common tube is called urinogenital canal. Urinogenital canal. It is also called vestibule. So this is a common duct formed by the union of that is vagina and the urinary blood. Then the following are the associated glands of the female reproductive system. We have Bartholin's gland. Bartholin's gland. Or Cowper's gland. Corpus plant. The name is called Corpus plant. Here it is called Bartholin's plant. And also called by name Corpus plant as a well. bone. And the gland just situated near and to the anal region is the just perineal gland. Perineal gland. As in the case of male. So these are the two associated glands of the female liver system. Then, now the vestibule or unogenital canal opens outside by a slit like opening. The name of the slit like opening is called vulva, through which only the eggs normally actually the animal receives the sperm by copulation process. So, the slit like opening through which the unogenital canal or vestibule opens is called vulva. So this is about what we call the female reproductive system, very simple organization. You have to study separately the urinary system and the reproductive system. Together the unogenital system in female. So this is the last part of your lesson, just what is given in the book regarding the rabbit. Study well and prepare for the examination for the forthcoming one on June 1st, all the best.